Wasabi guys, welcome back to another video. Remember to subscribe if you have not already. Nearing the end of the year, I saw this community post from Jake and Joel are Magic. Wonderful channel, you should go check them out. Awesome coverage of the 30th anniversary, and just all the drama of that situation. But with this community post, it really got me thinking. They say, what franchises would you like to see crossover in universes beyond? Which is what we're getting out of these crossovers. Things like 40K, Lord of the Rings. So I'm going to give you my five picks, franchises that I would like to see crossover with Magic the Gathering. This does, however, come with a caveat, a hypothetical if we could agree to keep these non-tournament legal and treat them more like draft sets, I think they would be perfect crossovers, giving them silver borders, any kind of altering to the card that would prevent it from being legally playable in a normal deck. The thing is, Hasbro understood this before. Way back when they crossed over with their other products like Transformers, My Little Pony, they made it easy to tell that they were not legally playable. So the first franchise that I think would be amazing, and again, if you were to ask me three years ago on pretty much all of these, I would say, heck yeah, crossover, we don't get too many of those. Castlevania is one of the most iconic video game franchises, and it's my first pick here because it is clearly inspiration for Innistrad and the character Soren Markov. What makes me think about Castlevania, it's not even so much your typical crossover, where you would take the franchise and just give it the card treatment. No, with this, I would love to see a crossover where you actually have the characters of Innistrad and the characters of Castlevania existing within the same environment. You could even do something pretty cool here. Instead of having Alucard and Symphony of the Night, you could have that be Soren Markov. I haven't seen Wizards do this yet where they experiment with a crossover that's more than just the game crossing over, but the themes as well, the stories, the characters. Borrow a little bit from each. There's a lot of Bram Stoker influence in anything having to deal with traditional vampires, and it really does feel like Castlevania and Innistrad would blend well together. The next crossover, this is no surprise to you if you've been following the channel. I believe I've made two videos about, but I would love to see a crossover with Dark Souls. Why I prefer game crossovers is because they translate better. You have game mechanics, you have items, you have upgrades. There's more for the player to interact with compared to if it were just a movie or a TV series. I will point out that Bloodborne, for a lot of the same reasons, could be a great crossover like Castlevania. And you have arguably even more flavor there because there's an eldritch horror theme in Bloodborne and Innistrad. But there is just more to Dark Souls. There are more characters, more backstories, more items, more equipment. You have actual sorceries, and where it's more like an RPG, you have character classes. This is why the Dungeons & Dragons crossover did pretty well. It wasn't because it's another Wizards product, but because you have more of that player option. It leaves you with plenty of room to create different kinds of characters. The next one is the Lord of the Rings. Now, I know I just mentioned this, and it is going to happen. It is already part of the universes beyond, but that doesn't mean I don't still want to see it. The Lord of the Rings is perhaps the only non-video game franchise that I would ever want to see a crossover for. You have C.S. Lewis, you have George R. R. Martin, and other wonderful fantasy authors, but I just don't quite get into their stories as much as I did with Tolkien and The Lord of the Rings. Everything that was built around Middle-earth, it has laid the groundwork for how a lot of other authors write fantasy stories. And there are an insane number of characters, and there's a wonderful variety to different creature types. I mean, who wouldn't love to see a Balrog as a demon creature in Magic the Gathering? What I would like to add to this is beyond just simply the Lord of the Rings. I know there are a lot of issues with the rights to the Silmarillion, but the characters that you will read about in the Silmarillion, those many stories, are just as interesting as the ones that you read in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. And a lot of people still don't know about them, so it would be really cool to see them in card form. Because just like with the Warhammer 40k crossover, there are players who are seeing that, and they're suddenly taking an interest in Warhammer, whereas they didn't before. The next one is another video game, The Elder Scrolls. It's another one of my favorite video game series. I know it's a lot of people's favorite video game series. And for a lot of the same reasons as Dark Souls, you have character class creation. You get to decide how you play the game. You get to decide your pros and cons. It was very clear that with the crossover for D&D, &D, character classes were a focus. If there's a downside to the RPG side of crossovers, it's that you don't really have a lot of specific characters that stand out. You'll have some memorable characters throughout the Elder Scrolls series, but it's not quite like a Castlevania, where Simon Belmont clearly stands out, where Alucard clearly stands out. With the Elder Scrolls series, there are just plenty of NPCs to choose from. The only difficult thing about it is just deciding which ones you would want to include. The side quests are really what make the Elder Scrolls series what it is. You have the different guilds that you can join, there's a lot of depth to this series, and it doesn't have to be Skyrim. I know Skyrim would sell a crossover like this, but any other setting would work. You could explore Daggerfall if you needed ideas for different characters. 
There's just so much material here. And the last crossover that I would ever like to see is one that is probably the least likely to ever happen because it as a game has been kind of abandoned. And that is the Thief series. If you don't know, the Thief games all the way back in the late 90s and early 2000s are among some of the best games if you care about stealth. It's story focused, but the gameplay is immersive. It's not an RPG, so you are going to be a little bit limited in creating different types of creatures, but the characters that do exist within the series are very interesting. And the main character, Garrett, is, dare I say, maybe one of the best video game protagonists of all time. What sells it for me as a possible crossover candidate is the atmosphere combined with what this Thief series is. It's not just your fantasy thief. There's a little bit of science fiction, a little bit of steampunk thrown in there which Magic the Gathering is no stranger to. There's plenty of science fiction. We have entire planes dedicated to machines. Enemy variety is wonderful as well. And yes, there is a 2014 Thief game. A lot of Thief fans don't really talk about that one because it doesn't really bring back the charm of the first two games and maybe even the third one. It's maybe the only one out of these that if I actually saw there was a possibility for a crossover, I would totally shell for it. It would be such a chance to take on a series that has some really great writing. The gameplay is incredible. It leaves you with a lot of different options if you wanted to create other types of cards beyond just creatures. There's a great variety to the gameplay. So let me know of the franchises you would personally like to see get a crossover with Magic the Gathering. Commander Void here signing off. I will see you all next time.